All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I am delighted to be joined by Nathan Faruja, who is all the way over in Malta. How are you doing, Nathan? Oh, very good. I'm very good. You? Yeah. Uh, and you're very good as well. And Nathan is an entrepreneur, business coach, CEO, record-breaking athlete, TEDx speaker, visage owner, NED philanthropist, husband and father. God, doesn't leave you a lot of spare time, does it, Nathan? No, I get bored <laughs> if I had spare time. <laughs> yeah. The, okay. And what we're going to talk about today is how to raise your game in business and, and life. So let me just ask you um, to start with, um, Nathan. Um, now that we're in this crazy like 2020 and COVID and all of that, um, raising your game in business and life, has that changed at all? Or are the fundamentals held true? Or is there anything else additionally you need to be doing today to really get yourself in, in, in peak performance mode? Well, I think, I think elements of the peak performance mode are more relevant today than ever. Um, things around, you know, a, a really clear purpose about why you get out of bed in the morning and how you build resilience or the resilience you've built so far, because these are the things that are going to allow you to ride the rough weather and come out the other end. So I think there are elements of what makes people successful that are today more relevant than ever. And, and if you need to work on those things, you know, focus there if you have the time rather than focus on maybe the more technical uh, skills perhaps. Right. And I mean, I guess, and, and for many people, this is almost like the endurance, uh, the endurance competitions that you've done, right? They're, they're, things are a little more extreme and a little bit harder than they normally are. Yes. And, uh, you know, the easiest thing is to blame your external environment and say, you know, mm -hmm. oh, I can't grow my business because uh, I can't employ people because or, uh, you know, my talent's leaving because and and. And this is the danger to be able to fall foul of the uh, I am out of control and therefore I just have to accept what's going on rather than take control um, and, and influence my outcomes. Yeah, because it is. I mean, I totally agree with you. It's very easy and, and it's very tempting to get to get lulled into blaming the external factors. Uh, but if you if you really do take accountability for your circumstances and sort of con look control the things that you can control, I think that's the key to. I mean, that's quite a liberating thing to do, anyway, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, we have this uh, sort of, you know, shift between um, being out of control and being in control, and that dictates your stress levels. Mm -hmm. When you feel in control, you feel less stressed, even if you have more to do. Um, this, this is this is the bane of micromanagement. You know, people who don't let go of stuff because they feel more in control and less stressed when they're doing it themselves. So yeah, it's it's human nature. Yeah, and but the reality is, how in control are you anyway? Even in that circumstance, uh, you know, by not letting things go. I mean, are you really in control? Yes, you're. You may be holding on to things, but you're certainly um, not really in control because there's other factors going to eventually push you to have to do something or to have to move, and you're better off moving by choice than being pushed. Absolutely, and again, a lot of it's about perception. You know, we, we think certain things about us and our skills or our environment, but are they really true? Are we how self-aware is the average person or the average CEO to know uh, and accept their, their strengths and weaknesses? Well, I think uh, self-awareness, that's, that's a big issue because I do think that's probably, I mean, I would almost say that's the number one issue that holds back most people from um, realizing their full potential is lack of self-awareness. So how do you... How do you help people gain self-awareness? Because it is a kind of a journey that uh, mm -hmm. if you've gone through it, I mean, it's a journey. It's not something that just happens overnight. But how do you help people start on that journey and actually see that through? Because it's an incre it's incredible things happen when you gain some level of self-awareness. I think that the fundamental starting point is, is the growth mindset. You know, how are people open to understanding themselves, accepting feedback, criticism, if you want? Um, and doing something about it. And, and that is a, a predisposing element of the speed of change that one can get um, if, they are, if they are willing. So, you know, understanding where you are on that, you know, the work of Carol Dweck and, and her work on, on mindset is, is for me fundamental. And there are tools you can use. There are plenty of, uh, you know, individual uh, assessment tools you can use that coaches use or even, you know, stuff online you can pay a, a decent subscription to and support your own personal sort of development through um, maybe more metric approaches. And I think as well, if you're, if you're not very self-aware or you feel you lack self-awareness, 
facts are the best way um, to uh, to give you feedback because you know something that is a, a tried and tested system is something that will at least give you the confidence to say okay that this is telling me the truth but whereas perhaps if you're in denial it's going to be more difficult with a coach then you end up sort of having a to and fro uh, so so you know th this sort of baseline I think is is, is the, it's the important starting point and then it's where it's working with someone that you trust you know in my case I use coaches myself as well as I am a coach um, to help people on that journey of where are the areas that are low-hanging fruit first, you know, how you can improve your self-awareness simply from a, a mind perspective, from a body perspective, from a, a well-being perspective, you know, the, bas the basic principles of understanding that you're in a good place um, or how to get in a good place. And then you, you take that further in, in challenges or, or work uh, or relationships. But, but again, it's, it's really getting the starting point right. Yeah, and, and I like that idea about uh, investing in yourself, because I do think that that is a critical point for people, because we, sp and I say this all the time, so I apologize to any listeners who've heard me pontificate on this in the past, but we're, we're very happy to invest money in our hobbies and things that we enjoy doing, right? But we, we're very reluctant to invest money in improving ourselves in relation to our job, the thing that actually puts bread on, on the table every day. And I just think that that's, a, that that's such a shame that more people don't realize that they should invest in themselves because too many people wait around for their company to invest in them. And at the end of the day, nobody cares about you as much as you. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And I think, yes, it's a, it is a mix. There's an element of a business understanding that the best asset is, is, it lies between the ears of its employees. So therefore, we need to develop it and nurture it by, like we would any asset and invest in it. Mm -hmm. But again, it's, it's, it's also you know, really understanding about where you want to go next and, and listen let's face it there are people that are happy where they are and they you know they're in the comfort zone and, and why change and, and that's fine um if your environment persists in the way that it is and you continue to fit in that box then then okay but the thing is that the environment is changing all the time so unless you build resilience and invest in yourself what's working today is not going to work tomorrow yeah no and absolutely and and, and i think it's a, it's an interesting thing which you just mentioned there about you know if you are happy and you are comfortable in doing what you're doing whatever that's good but you should acknowledge it right um because oftentimes you know people worry about the expectations of other people or i should be maybe trying to progress or whatever uh, and, or maybe they're unhappy seeing other people progress but they're not really trying to progress because as you say at the end of the day they're actually happy where you are so i think happy where they are so i think there's an element of if that's the case just be honest about it right just be honest about mm. where you are that you're happy doing what you're doing and therefore be comfortable with it and if you're not and if you're not then you know fine too yeah and start no, listen i i work with people who whose outlet of performance or raising their game is is not at work you know, they come to me as a business coach, but actually they, they're happy where they are and working nine to five, getting a decent salary, and they want to improve their artistic capabilities. Right. But the human nature requires an element of stretch because otherwise we just become rusty, we, we get brain fog. You know, we need to have a challenge. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think it's important, though, is for people to, to realize, you know, that if if you're not getting on or you're not achieving what you want to achieve, you have to ask yourself, as we mentioned earlier about the mindset, do you have a mindset right now of, um, well, deep down, I'm actually just comfortable where I am, or do you have the mind, or maybe you think it's going to be too hard or whatever, but how do you start to shift, shift that mindset into a more uh, performance based one, a little one more we're stretching yourself and maybe achieving a little more finding what your real passion is. Yes, I think one of the things I find most when working with people is this idea of going from, you know, zero to full marathon in a running analogy, you know, mm -hmm. um, and it doesn't work because you just overload your cortisol and your adrenaline and you just bounce back into your comfort zone. So what I always say using a, a running analogy is it's, it's just adding the kilometers, you know, a, a kilometer at a time. And, and this is where the baby steps of getting out of your comfort zone comes in. We need to, you know, if you look at science and neuroscience, they talk about all you need to get into flow to get into the zone is to be out of your comfort zone by 4%. Mm. Now, any, anything much more than that is going to create so much stress. You're going to say, you know what, this is too uncomfortable. I'm just going to go back to where I was. So the concept of the 4% is the idea that every day we do things that stretch us. And it doesn't have to be work. It doesn't have to be quit your job or start your business. It could be take a different route to work, get the stairs instead of the lift, brush your teeth with the other hand, try a new uh, cuisine. 
you know, speak a different language, anything that's going to get your brain to start to rewire itself. Uh, and that is actually preparing your brain to take on more stress and build resilience over time for when the big stuff happens, where you need to make those big step changes. Yeah, I mean, that's fascinating, I think, for people just to to focus in on that for a moment, the, the concept of 4%, because let's face it, 4%, most people can can do that, right? 4% is a manageable amount. Uh, yes, I, typically it's the understanding of, you know, most people think that that's not enough for me to change. Mm -hmm. But you know, especially it depends on how old you are and also your, your state of, of mind at the time. But if, if, you've have, if you've got a lot of experience, that actually slows you down in, when it comes to change. You know, you've, you've become an oil tanker that takes three miles to turn, you know, 10 right. degrees. Uh, you're not a speedboat anymore. You're not as agile. So your state of mind, the starting point, as I said earlier, really depends on the, the tactics you, you want to take. I mean, if you're young, you're, you're fresh out of college or, or, or university and you want to experiment and you do lots of stuff, yeah, by all means. You know, stick your neck out and you know do the metaphorical bungee jump when it comes to choosing your 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 next business idea or whatever, um, because it's easier for you. You're going to rebound quicker. But uh, someone who's who's been in the game for a while will typically fall back on an experience as an excuse not to change. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a very good point, and I guess it's also um, in this period that we're in right now. Uh, it, it becomes very easy to kind of batten down the hatches like and, and keep everything and sort of say, OK, let's hunker down and we get through this or whatever, as opposed to maybe look at maybe there are things we need to change. Maybe there's opportunities for us. Maybe there's a different way of approaching the current situation rather than just taking this kind of put your head down and hope it all passes soon. Yes. And, and I think this is on the contrary, therefore, when experience is helpful. You know, understand really how risk works. What have you tried in the past that has allowed you to take a risk, mitigate it, but, you know, not you know, risk the house sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and so this is about testing. It's, it's trying, it's not, it's not betting everything. It's saying, let me tweak something. Let me, let me pivot slightly. Doesn't mean you, you completely restructure. I mean, it, you know, those are opportunities. Now is, you know, these black swan moments are opportunities to completely pivot and start again or diversify completely or shift market or industry. Um, these are, you know, perfect triggers to do that. Um, but if you've got a going concern, which is sort of flatlined because of the situation, uh, experiment. Mm -hmm. For me, it's, it's you know, it, it also makes life more interesting. Now, hunkering down doesn't sound like much fun. No, 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 it doesn't. But, but I think the other, the other part, I think, that maybe is, is harder for people than ever is just the level of uncertainty. So how do you how do you help people deal with um, uncertainty, especially when it's it's so pronounced as it is now? I think again it goes back to this sort of perception and, and the self awareness element. So you know really we we um, you know we make pro proverbial mountains out of molehills. Sometimes uh, we see things that we magnify uh, because they happen to be contextual or timely. Well, actually, if we think back and we say, but listen, at the end of the day, do I have my skills? Do I have my education to fall back on? Do I have my network? Do I have people that love me and, and, and are ready to stick up for me and help me out and suffer with me if, if need be? And when we really go back to basics, we realize actually, you know, we have opportunities and options. If you just think about, you know, the six-figure salary or, 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 or the end of your uh, target, yeah, that can be a bit scary because the situation is what it is. But actually, the, fundamentally, the things we really need to be successful are we already have. Yeah, and I think that's a really good point. And, and maybe something that people need to do right now is kind of take an inventory of all the things that they already have and, and recognize that. Because, that, you know, because sometimes we forget about, uh, forget about the things we have. As you say, you know, forget about the fact that, you know, we're surrounded by good people, that we have maybe a place, a decent place to live in, that, you know, there's all of these blessings that are, that have, um, that are heaped upon us that we tend to overlook because we're so focused on the chaos. Yes. I remember when I, I shifted from employment, having, you know, a decent CEO salary to opening my own business, mm -hmm. I said, okay, what's the minimum amount of money I need to survive and pay the bills and the school fees and, and the healthcare and whatever? And I was surprised how little I actually needed compared to what I was already being paid. And it gives mm -hmm. you reassurance because you go, you know what? Okay, I don't have to work 24 hours a day to make ends meet until I build up the business. Uh, you know, I don't need as much as I thought I did or I was used to. 
Yeah, and, and I think that's a really good point there is is actually taking stock of things properly. And uh, because we, we tend to wander around with a bunch of assumptions, like say in your situation there, you probably assumed that you needed close to the same salary to continue to operate for a while. And then when you actually did the research, you know, and dug into it, you said, oh, yeah. so maybe that's not the truth. And I think that's yeah, the case. Let's, let's I don't say, think people investigate enough. Yes. No, and I, I think it's a simple choice is that you can, for a period of time, go without, you know, the perks of, sure. oh, I find, uh, I'll drink a cheaper bottle of wine, you know, I mean, I'll mm -hmm. go less to the restaurant. I mean, yeah. these are things that you can, you know, then you will get used to them and therefore we, there's, they become an expectation, but actually they're not life-threatening, you know. Yeah, and I think that's I think that's a key. Yeah, I think that's a key. Well, you know, going going with cheaper wine, you know, maybe that's a step too far, Nathan. I don't know. But. <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, but I think it's a great point for people to take away, though, is the fact that you know you should take a step back sometime and you know just take inventory of your life and actually see what's important in there, and, and see that actually, yeah, you can exist sort of quite happily for a while maybe by as you say removing some yeah. things for a time which removes a bit of stress from your life and unfortunately it uh, usually takes major episodes for us to have this sure. realization where actually if we just had some quiet time and, and and thought about it we'd get to that conclusion i remember you know i was i was running across the sahara desert and, and i had been out you know in, in the wilderness for some time and i was lying exhausted at the end of the day looking up at the stars and saying what am i missing most and it wasn't my iPhone or the latest gadget or the watch or the car mm. or the house. It was, you know, my kids and, and the family and good friends yeah. and someone to talk to. <laughs> so yeah. you know, these realizations are, <laughs> these realizations, <laughs> you know, we, we don't need to be pushing ourselves to the extreme to see them. But, you know, getting out of your comfort zone helps. Yeah, no, it's good. I mean, I, I, it, it's a great takeaway for people as well. You know, I mean, you don't have to like run, and, run across the Sahara Desert to realize these things, but maybe you should metaphorically run across the Sahara Desert once in a while and sort of say, if everything was stripped away right now, what are the things that are most important? Exactly. Yeah, well, listen, um, Nathan, this has been this has been great. Um, I love the conversation. Um, all of Nathan's information will be in the contributor bio below this. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and your company. Uh, well, our focus really is, is again, helping people raise their game. We work typically with CEOs. We're, we're, uh, we represent Vistage in, in Malta as well. Um, but we do a lot of work with internationals on, online and through, through you know, video conferencing. Uh, I do some motivational talks as well, which helps uh, people understand a little bit more about the stuff we've talked about. And really, ultimately, what I'm trying to do is help people help themselves and unlock their potential. Yeah, it's fantastic. As I said, all of Nathan's information will be below the contributor, below the video in the contributor bio. Uh, my name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. I will see you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you.